You're listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me, your naturally platinum blonde pop culture connoisseur. I'm the reality TV junkie, self-improvement addict, and host with only the hottest tea spilled fresh weekly. For more hot takes, go and give me a follow at Just Plain Zach. I always keep it funny and I always keep it cute. And if you're like me and you want to stay up to date with the latest reality tea, you're going to want to give us a follow at No Filter with Zach or just join our private Facebook group. The link is in the description below. All right. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. I hope your spirits are bright and someone is jingling your bells tonight. I'm excited for today's guest. She's another naturally platinum blonde powerhouse known for her iconic pigtails. But let's hope that um, she never throws my husband in a pool. I have to get a husband first, but we'll (laughs) we'll work on that. Please welcome from the Real Housewives of New Jersey, the founder of Macbeth Collection, the Margaret Josephs. Hi, Zach. How are you? I love a platinum princess that goes with the mod. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to chat with you. Oh, so excited. So happy to be on with you. I love all the pink that's going on around you. It's like it's giving me like spring meets winter vibes, but like yes, in like a yes. she- you've like brought the chic to Christmas and to to the holidays. Yes, yes. I'm all about the pink. I, I always have to have a pink room. I always say my style, I realize I've nailed it down. It's very Hollywood Regency because we're very old Hollywood in my house. Wait, so with all this pink, are you like trying to compete with Lisa Vanderpump? No, 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 not compete. <laughs> her her style's different than mine. I say I'm like vintage Hollywood kind of like high Hollywood vintage. With I love a little it. twist of modern. Okay, so before we dive deep, you have to answer my icebreaker questions. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm ready to roll, baby doll. Number one, where did you grow up and what part of the world are you currently living in right now? Or are you currently was, quarantined in? I was born in New Jersey. I grew up in Mayapack, New York, though. I moved there when I was 11. Mm. And then I had moved back to the city when I went to FIT. And right now I am quarantining in New Jersey in my house in Englewood. I'll just say Englewood. Everyone knows I live in Englewood. And how is the house coming along? I feel like that's been part of your journey every season as we've seen the house come together. Yeah, people don't realize that, that I had moved in when I first started filming, literally like three and a half, four weeks prior to getting on the show. I was not living here forever. My house before that was in Tenafly, and I had just moved in here to this house in Englewood. But everyone will be glad to see there's been a big renovation. Well, I look forward to seeing that. I already love The Office. I'm already Thank ready to, to move in. All right. <laughs> it, it, there's room for you, sweetheart. What's one word your mother would use to describe the Marge? Um, dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact. What's one thing people would not expect about you from what we see on the show? What they would not. Uh, nurturing. Oh, I think you're very nurturing. I don't. Well, I think I'm nurturing. Maybe maternal because I don't talk. I you don't see my children. I'm extremely maternal. What is your drink of choice? My drink of choice, coffee. You're, Co- you don't drink coffee. alcohol, huh? You're not a big. Do you ever no. drink, or you've just like no. completely shut away? I, uh, I never ever drink. I was never a drinker, and I. I've said it before watching, I grew up with Marge Singer, listen, love, love her, but I grew up with her watching her drink. So I chose not to drink. And then when I finally decided to have a drink, I get horrible migraines and I Mm. get the worst, worst headache. Well, I'm with you right there. My coffee. I love coffee all day. Yeah. Coffee all day. I start in the morning. I probably have five or six cups and then I, I just move on to water with lemon or or herbal tea has your coffee tolerance changed since we've been like lot we've been inside a lot more this year i feel like i can't handle as much coffee as i could pre 2020 i feel like i'm just home and then i start shaking like i used to love the moment when my eye would twitch because i'm like now i'm like a real powerhouse but now i'm like i need to cut back my coffee no i to be honest i think my coffee tolerance has increased because (laughs) i'm home i want to get more done so it's like I start the coffee when I wake up. Then two hours later, I have more coffee. I even have coffee at night at like nine o'clock at night. Oh, my God. I love it. Um, Crazy. Last icebreaker question, which is my favorite to ask. If you had to be reincarnated as a Kardashian, which one would it be? Um, you're not going to believe it, but Courtney. I love Courtney. Oh, my God. Aside from Kim, Courtney. Courtney's my favorite. That was my choice Courtney, for like ever. Courtney is um, she's had the least amount of work done. Mm hmm. 
She, you know, she's comfortable in her own skin. And I, I think she's naturally beautiful. I've seen her in a restaurant. And I, I guess because she's still popular, but she keeps it private. True. She knows when to balance the lifestyle. Well, she knows yes, when to be a I, mom. And I think yeah. Kim is fabulous, but I feel, I, I just, I think I'd be Courtney. I love it. So what has been going on? We haven't seen you since last season, since the reunion, which was yes. an explosive one. Last season was a very emotional season for you. Ooh, ooh, it was what, a tough one. The Marge has had it. What is going on? What has been going on since then? Obviously, the world is shut down. But like, how have you been coping and surviving in 2020? Well, thank God we had Lexi and I, Life and Mrs. V, had started a podcast literally two weeks before shutdown. We started Caviar Dreams, Tuna Fish Budget, which is about influencers, disruptors, entrepreneur, leaders in their industry, anybody who's had a dream and wanted to start something new that's become successful. So we've interviewed such amazing people. So we've kept the podcast going, which I love, and it's been very inspirational. So I've been working on that. Uh, the key, the word of 2020 has been pivot, which I'm so sick of that word, but it really is. So just learning to pivot, helping other people pivot in this pandemic, because I think it's gotten a lot of people down. So just trying to help everybody else stay positive during it, because at my age of 53, I've had numerous lives. I've pivoted, yeah. I've had lawsuits, I've had divorces, and I've learned to pull myself up by the bootstraps. And I think it's just helping other people do that. So that's what I've been doing during the pandemic. Thank God we got to film our show during it mm -hmm. also this past summer through the end of October. So I got to do that. Worked on a book which was purchased by um, a very large publishing house, which I can't announce it was purchased by, but that'll be coming out in 2021 as well. And it's about women in business. It's not a housewives book per se, um, but it's about things that shape me in my life and what I've learned at every part of my life. I love that. I mean, that's one thing that I've always had so much respect about with you is you always have been a hustler and you've shown every side of what it takes to build a business. Obviously, you have a very successful business now, but you've been open about your struggles in the past to build yes. that business. And I think one thing that I respect about you is you're also so open and candid about the lawsuits that you've had to face as just like a casualty of like what it takes to run a business. You run into these hurdles and you never shied away from it. I think a lot of housewives get um, put in the hot seat because they kind of deflect or they don't want to talk about it on camera and you leaned into that and I think that vulnerability is what makes you so relatable on the show oh thank you I think it's very normal and it's an everyday part of business when you have a large business and people it, it's common uh this country happens to be very litigious <laughs> unfortunately and things happen and anybody can sue anybody guilty or not right. it doesn't make a difference you have to defend yourself things happen in business and you move on from it. You learn from your mistakes. It's not a failure. It happens and it's nothing to be ashamed of or embarrassed of. So it doesn't mean that you committed a crime. It's, right. it's actually extremely common. And, and listen, it could really hurt you, but it also shows you how to protect yourself. Uh, women in business can be very strong. And if it happens to a man, no one balks about it. As soon as it happens to a housewife or a woman, you're, you know, People are ready to shun you and look at this one. She's a fraud. That doesn't mean you're a fraud. It's happened. Numerous companies, Apple's had lawsuits. This one, no one is looking to take, say, horrible things about men in business. And I think women in business sometimes get a bad rap. And I want to show that it's you can be successful. It doesn't mean any a negative connotation. So, I mean, I know for me, I've been a hustler since I, I mean, I was like making, I, I've been making like bootleg CDs and I would sell them in the sixth grade to the kids. Like not that that was the best business practice, but I've just always kind of been in that mindset. So like you said earlier, I feel like, I mean, I'm only 27, but I feel like I've had several different careers and had to like, you know, been burned at the torch and rebuild myself over and over. And those are just the casual Good. casualties of kind of building yourself as a business owner, what advice do you have to people? Because I feel like this was a very torch or people feel like it's a very torching year. For me, I'm very much like it's a mat your life is a matter of perspective and you can look at your life as a, as a shithole or you can look at it as an opportunity to grow. But for a lot of people that feel like this was a really challenging year for them, what advice do you have to those young business owners that are trying to build themselves up right now? Yes, I, I just want everybody to realize that there's no overnight success. Everybody looks at everybody else and it's like a compare and despair. Well, look what they've achieved. Look at this, what this has happened. It takes a while to build a business. Nothing happens overnight. 
everybody has to work hard. You have to be a hustler. Mm -hmm. Don't get down if something doesn't happen instantaneously. If someone tells you no, keep on trying. It, it's, it's not a slap in the face. You have to be able to take rejection. Um, I don't be so sensitive. You had to develop a thick skin. I always say, know what you're not good at is just as important as knowing what you are good at. Because I've always said, I'm a great front person. I'm very creative. I'm horrible at my back office and organization. I'm a total disaster. So I have to have people on my team that are good at that, which is very, sorry, my thing is opening, which is super important to me. And, and I hire people to, to do that. If you can't afford to hire people, get people who eventually could get sweat equity in your business. Don't give up as much, but let them prove themselves. There's so many ways to skin a cat and, and work in a business, but it's just also having an amazing team. If you can, you know, eventually around you, people who are supportive, learn from people who have done it before you, be a sponge, learn everything around you. I think that's what's really important. And, and if you can have a mentor, that's really important. And what lessons have you learned from doing housewives? Like now being in the public where, you know, things like a lawsuit pops up and, you know, immediately everyone wants to dismiss you as, you know, oh, you did something wrong. Or, you know, we see Erica Jane going through it right now and people are I making so many assumptions about them. What lessons have you learned, whether it's like to build a tough skin or to protect your business through doing the housewives? I think it's always important to be honest. Uh, don't over explain just, uh, and also have a thick skin, never respond in a very nasty way. I never attack my fans, even people who are very vicious to me. I always answer them with respect. I treat everybody with respect, even the horrible trolls as people would like to call them. If they're really vile and disgusting, um, then I would probably block them. Not that I do a lot of blocking. I think you have to hold yourself, once you become a public figure and you're on a public platform, you do have a social responsibility to behave in a certain way, in an upstanding way. Do not get down in the gutter and be dirty. People have the right to have their opinion about you. People have the right to comment on you. You are a public figure. You don't have to answer every single thing. As long as you know you did the right thing, you can hold your, I feel like I could walk in any room and hold my head up high, as long as I keep my side of the street clean. That's and and I make sure to do that and I and to hold myself accountable. That's great. Um, holding yourself accountable and, and taking the higher road, I have to ask, have you spoken to Danielle or Marty at all? Have any communication with them? No. And they did move out of my town. They moved out of, they moved out of our town. Uh Marty did, unlike Danielle, uh call me psychic, like I've said numerous times. I could predict the future. I predicted that marriage to be over was divorced. Yeah, he filed for divorce in eight weeks. He also defended her last reunion. She said she was going to buy the house. They sold the house. She was removed from the home. I, I actually felt sorry for her. He sold the house and they moved out of my town, which thank God I don't have to ever run into them in Starbucks. And that was done. <laughs> and, and that was it. Did that I, ever I mean, happen? I, have you ever run into like other housewives at Starbucks? Did you ever like grab well, a grande she, latte with Siggy? Oh no. She, God forbid if I her by the way, I take Danielle back over Siggy any day of the week. I actually used to love Danielle. We had a close relationship. I feel very sad the way it went down. I think she's suffering. I don't think she's an evil person. I think she's hurting and damaged and I think that's what it is. And it comes from being um she always feels like a cat in a corner which is not really the case. Uh, so I, I do have like a mixed feeling about her, even though she physically attacked me and all of those things. I just think she's, but the other one repulses me. She's a stain on New Jersey and I can't wait till she moves to Florida. <laughs> Literally she, a stain on New Jersey. Is she really moving to Florida or are we? Well, if she could ever sell her damn house. <laughs> I mean, legit. Have you not seen her Instagram? She's repulsive. I, I haven't seen her Instagram. I saw a couple of things and I'm like, I think I'm going to, you know, out of sight, out exactly. of mind with that one. Um, Conspiracy theorist psycho. What happened with, because you guys, it seemed like you and Danielle did have like a really close relationship and it was kind of glossed over on the show. But like, what was the real breakdown of that relationship? I think certain and this is not me. If, if one of my friends sees me doing something or calls me out on something, I can have an adult conversation about it. I am not a smoke blower. I don't want people to be close to me who blow smoke up my ass. 
If I look like shit, tell me I look like shit. If I did something to hurt you, tell me I did something to hurt you. Don't carry on about it once I apologize. Right. That is not the case with someone like a Danielle. She's one who needs adoration, who needs love, who needs, you cannot be honest with her. If you are honest with her about something, you're immediately being mean to her or something like that. You know, that's damage. And she needs to work on herself. That's a therapy. And I can't be in a close friendship with someone like that. I have to be able to be completely candid and honest with someone, even if it's going to hurt them. And I think that's what happened. And I was completely honest with her about certain things and she didn't like it. And, and that was it. That's understandable. Um, so I have yeah, some questions. I mean, that's not for me. I, have I some... mean, no, that's, that's high school bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I feel that. Do you ever feel like housewives feels like high school bullshit sometimes? Like oh, yeah, for sure. Where are housewives in high school? We never get, you know, Zach, you never get out of high school. You do know that, right? You just kind of keep repeating the cycle in new phases. It's true. Do you think it's because people haven't moved out of the place that they were in in high school? Or like, what do you think is the reason we keep finding ourselves in these situations? Well, I think certain people mature and certain people don't mature. So the people who don't mature suck the people who did mature back in. So it's like this horrible cycle that you get into. Uh, and that's really what it is. And I think everybody has to realize what's important to them in life. Listen, I could be a petty bitch sometimes. I don't want to be, Can't but I, certain things I can be. Everything's relative and in perspective at certain times in your life. During COVID, you would think the Jersey girls got nice and calm, which we did. And, you know, we were happy to be together for about a whole hour. And then within an hour, we're all, you know, oh, yeah. and then we love each other again. It's a, It's a very interesting dynamic. So I have some questions that listeners sent in for you. Are you ready? Okay, great. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, first up, CP wants to know, how's Marge Sr.? Marge Sr. is great. The, the woman has more energy than anybody, much more energy than me. She worked all through COVID. I've always worked from the home. Marge yeah. Sr. went to work every day, wore a mask, felt like a million bucks. She's great. Thanks for asking. I love it. She also wants to know how the kids are since we didn't get to see them on the show. How are your relationships with them? I just want to clarify between Joe and myself, we have six children, which people don't realize the youngest being 24, the youngest. Mm. Okay. So the youngest is my son who I birthed. I don't talk about him on the show. He's a very serious job. We're extremely close. He's home for the holidays. Um, the two children who I said I'm strained from, what the relationship we text um they one of them doesn't live in this state our kids are spread out throughout the country so joe has two kids who we're very close with they fly home for the holidays but they're like 29 and 30 my other two kids are 42 38 so everybody's much older has their own lives so there's still some strain um but you know four out of the six are close that's good. It's, it's, but it, listen, it's still stressful. But what makes me happy is all my kids are happy and successful. And that's the best I could ask for. Chelsea wants to know, how did you get over Teresa telling Danielle to pull your hair? She, Chelsea thinks you forgave her a little too easily. I know. You know, it's funny. Some other people say that as well. I saw the way Teresa felt. So we all know Teresa doesn't say sorry that easily. <laughs> She immediately caved. And I said to her that day, I said, are you sorry because you got caught? Are you sorry because you really feel horrible? She felt horrible. And I know Teresa well enough to see when she's truly sorry. To this day, when I see her, she's like, you know, I get sick every time I see that playback. And I know it hurt her also. And, and I'm not even making an excuse for her, but I know she didn't realize the severity when she did that. She didn't think Danielle was going to come behind me, drag my hair. She thought she right. was going to come behind me, give me a little tug on the ponytail, like a little joke, like, yeah, 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 pull her hair. She didn't realize, but I did that, say that to Teresa. Danielle was so inflamed, so crazy after she set my purse on fire. I said, she could have had a scissor or a knife and you don't know what she would have done. I go, you don't realize how unpredictable she is. We're not dealing with someone who's like us. Right. You know, like, I, I mean, as a joke, I would, you know, it's like me, like, you know, she was thinking it's the way I would pull someone's bra strap. It's not yeah. like a big deal. And I knew where Teresa's heart was. She felt horrible. She still feels horrible. And that's why I forgave her. What was your, like, what were you thinking when you received the news? And then did that change at all when you actually saw the footage and heard the hot mic with her saying it? When I heard the news, I'm going to say this. Production didn't know. None of us knew. They were in shock. They, the, we were all waiting for Melissa to come back to that season finale. And I was calling her on the cell phone, even Joe Gorga, but she was like not answering the phone because production was there and they didn't want her to tell us all. They had to pull the footage. 
Because at that point, they didn't watch back and listen to the audio of that scene yet because we were still filming. They weren't at editing at that point yet. So they didn't know that Teresa did that. So everybody was in shock. And everybody, then, including production. And Only Danielle knew. When you saw, when you actually saw the footage and you hear Teresa saying it, did that change how you felt at all now that it was it was like actually real and not just a story from Danielle? Um, well, I knew from, you know, everybody, production, everyone else, that like she did say, you know, and Teresa admitted to it. Yeah, I was upset to watch back the footage. I had to see it with the viewers. I saw, I see it like a day or two before I was devastated and I was upset, but she called me right away. She called me right away. I was like, I'm sick about it. I'm so sorry. It was upsetting. What was more upsetting. It was to watch my head get dragged. I was like, Holy crap. My neck could have broke. I didn't I know. Realize, but I was like, wow, well, I'm pretty acrobatic. And that weave was on tight. <laughs> it was. It, it stayed yeah. intact. Uh, the real Andy of Beverly Hills wants to know, what do you regret more, throwing Marty in the pool or pouring water on Danielle? And he also noted that both were very very much part of, of New Jersey history. Yes, uh, I do not regret throwing Marty in the pool at all. I'd do it again 10,000 times over. He was so vicious to me. I do regret pouring water on Danielle only because... It's like igniting a rabid dog. But I will say, <laughs> I hate to say that, but you can't even ignite a rabid dog. That's the whole, she came in there looking for a fight. She did, you know, it was so fast, the footage, if anyone slows it down, she did chest bump me twice prior to that. I really thought she was going to hit me. Obviously, if someone's going to hit you, you probably shouldn't pour water on them. But it was like just a gut reaction in my part. Like, listen, when I threw wine in her face in Cabo, she asked for that shit. I don't even care. The pool push, she asked her, I probably shouldn't, I shouldn't have poured water on her while she was wearing her Versace. <laughs> you know, not the Versace, the Versace. That was something that Tom mentioned is he wanted to know what triggered you so much when she brought up your kids in Cabo that triggered you to throw the wine at her. Well, I will tell you, she was already had, um, she came back, Melissa said she was saying what a horrible mother I was. She was saying horrible things about my kids to Melissa. And then when they were shopping in the market that day, Melissa had come back to tell me. Then we're at dinner. I'm not even talking about it. And she's saying, what a horrible mother. I'm. She knows damn well that I'm extremely close with four of my children. She knows me personally. She's been here in my home. She knew I had flown to my son's college graduation right prior to that and wrote me a beautiful note to say, I know how much, you know, she knows how close I am my kids. So to say that is disgusting to behave like to the world, like I'm this hard. Everybody knows I keep my children very private. They're grown adults. And they choose to remain private, and I respect them I, for that. And it, it's their position. They were, they're not little children who got on the show. And I have enough of a family, you know, my husband, everyone else. Not. So for her to do that, she was just disgusting and saying, oh, you're never going to see your grandchildren. Knowing damn well, I'm, I'm very involved in my kids. I was like, you, you know, I just said, keep pushing it. She kept pushing it. I was like, that's it. I was like, I took Dolores's red wine. It wasn't even mine. I was like, <laughs> And I mean, I, I had perfect aim. Teresa was wearing white. It didn't land on her, it land on Danielle's dress. She still had tags on. I was like, great. I didn't even give a shit. Do you think that she would, when she returned to the show, she came in with the intention of being the one that kind of stirred the pot and shook everything up with the intention of like coming back full time? Or like, what do you think she was trying to accomplish? I think she, that's her nature. She can't be any different. I think she wanted to be different. She just can't be any different. I wanted her to be different. Yeah. And I really believed in her, even when she made up that story about Dolores, her first season when she said, oh, she said this about Teresa. Oh, yeah. I believed her first up until I did it. And then I knew Dolores and I are so close. And then I started to see the way she could t twist the truth. And I had called her even about things, not about me. And, and it was unfortunate. It was, listen, it's unfortunate. I don't think she's a bad human. I think she's so desperate to be famous mm. and it, it's her about being famous and and creating something that's not true her whole life is the show i think when you're a reality star and your whole life is about being on a show that's when you it, it causes problems i think everybody now on my show has a very big life outside the show and that's why we're a great cast we're Unlike some people on other franchises, I feel like when when your whole life is about being famous, it's who gives it, you know, it's not. Yeah. What can you tease about this upcoming season? Are we going to get a, a trailer soon? I hope we get a trailer soon. I saw Andy say 
I mean, we have to get a trailer in January. Because I think we're coming out early 2021. So we've heard different bits of what may be coming up this season. Can you shed any light on what we might see? I really cannot do any spoiler alerts. No spoiler alerts, but I will say it's a great season. Um, you would think it would be calm from the pandemic, but it's not. It's uh, it is high intensity, high intensity, and every and everybody's in it. Everybody's in it. Lots of drama, tears, hysteria, fighting. I mean, it's crazy. Do you feel like you came? Do you feel like, like every season you come out of the show stronger, or do you feel like I, it causes you so much anxiety? No, I feel like I came out of this. Um, I think the long run. I came, my first season was such a rough rookie season. I was called an anti-Semite. I was, you know, it was just such a rough, I feel like I'm fine. I I feel like I take it well. I come out strong. I feel like I've been through so much in business and my personal life in general. I've had such a strong disposition and constitution. I was kind of, I feel like I was almost cut, made it made for this show. To me, it's just regular life. When you first came on the show, though, they made it seem like you and Siggy were friends. And I remember once you guys started having issues, I was a little confused as to why it felt like you weren't being, and which she kind of portrayed in that season, that you weren't being loyal to her as a friend. What was your relationship with her prior to the show? We were more acquaintances. We were never friends. Um, We are very different people. We have a mutual friend who she's no longer friends with, but I am Jody Goldberg, who we knew from town. We were both lived in Tenafly. She still lives in Tenafly until we lose her. But we lived around the corner from each other for quite a few years, literally around the block. And whenever we saw each other, we were very respectful of each other because she worked doing her matchmaking and I always had a business. So we were two mothers in town that really did work. A lot of women in our town didn't work. So we were respectful. Listen, we're both big personalities in different ways. I never walk into a restaurant screaming, look at me. me." Um, But but I've lived in that town since 1991. She came in much later than I did. I I had a very big life in Tenafly. I don't need to cause a scene wherever I go. I don't need to be a spectacle. That's not me. So we respect each other. We had a mutual respect. We weren't good friends. We were more acquaintances. Okay. So when she, and she wasn't, she wasn't nice to me. Truth is she wasn't nice to me. I don't, I think she thought I was going to be a sidekick. I'm no one's sidekick. I don't need a sidekick, but I'm no one's sidekick either. I feel that. Have you gotten to meet Teresa's new boyfriend yet? We see them all around town together. I haven't met him. We're making plans to eat dinner together in January. She sent me all the photos. I saw a photo of him. She sent it to me ahead of time. I know Louis, very handsome. They seem very happy. I hear he's absolutely wonderful. And I'm thrilled for her. I think it's good to see her. We really got to watch her go from like being so in love with Joe to seeing them go through their legal issues. And then we ultimately saw the marriage. Um, You know, we see we saw them separate, but it's nice to see her kind of go through this full 360 moment where now she really seems like she's happy in this new relationship and ready for this next chapter of her life. She deserves to be happy. If anybody deserves to be happy and who's been through it, it's Teresa. And I and I am wishing her everything amazing. Her and her girls deserve everything great. Have you, do, are you close to, or have you ever met Caroline Manzo? I've never met Caroline Manzo. I love, always loved her character. I think she's very smart. I think she's strong. I think she's, you know, would have been great to work with or, and be friends with, but it just never happened. Would you be, would you like if she joined, like came back on the show? Oh, I get a big kick out of it. I think it'd be great. I think Personally, I think after uh, COVID-19, I don't know if her and Teresa could ever heal. That would be amazing. And then I wouldn't be the uh, you know oldest on the show. So that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> what about Jacqueline Larita? Or have you met any of the prior housewives? Uh, Kathy Wakili, I've met before. Lovely. We both go to Julius Michael. Everybody, I've uh, who else? I've never met. No, I think that's really it. Who else have I met who's been on my show? No, that's really all I've ever met. But I think Rosie, Rosie's adorable. Who else have I met? No, that's really it. But I, I'd be open to Caroline coming back for sure. Or Dina, whoever. Jacqueline. I'm open to anybody. Jacqueline, 
Um, I don't know Jacqueline very well. We've written to each other. Her daughter, Ashley, is always very sweet, very writing to me. I've never met Jacqueline before she left, but you know, she's, um, she was always lovely, always lovely to me via social media. What, what if they said, what if they told you Danielle was coming back next season? Would oh, you be ready I, for I don't, I don't think that would happen. I just can't imagine. Who's, no one's friends with her. You I have know. to have some connection. What about Kim D? Would you be cool with Kim D like actually becoming a housewife? I feel like she's been really good at stirring the pot in the past. I think stirring the, I think uh, it's not that I wouldn't be, I just don't know who she'd be connected to. It's not that I have any issues. Um, I don't really know her very well. I was always very, obs- I, I came on being close with Teresa and Melissa and Right away, Teresa and Melissa had an issue with her. So I was just immediately friends with Teresa and Melissa. So I was like, you know what? If you're not close with her and she's very negative towards you at the time. Keep your distance. Just I just kept my distance. It's not like she did like, you know, she didn't do anything to me personally, but I just kept my distance because I didn't need to befriend someone who my dear friends weren't close with. Are you a fan of the other Housewives shows? Mm-hmm. Which ones Sorry, are you? Myself. Which ones are on your your watch list? Uh, New York, without a doubt. Mm. I love New York. Are you a fan I, of Ramona? I know Dolores has had some some moments with her. Well, I was, I'm very close to Dorinda, even though she's left. Oh, Sonia, I love Dorinda. Sonia, I love Leah. I think New York, Louis, I love that. You know what? They're a strong cast. They're great. They're fun to watch. They're absolutely totally different than New Jersey. We're all married. They're all single. Right. They're it's fun to watch, different. though. Yeah, you're both on it's the East Coast and you're not far from each other, but you live such different lifestyles. Yes. Salt Lake City, the new Salt Lake Ooh, City. So good. I'm a little obsessed. So good. So good. Mary. So Mary is like a wild character on that show. She I love me, Mary. She makes me cringe, but she also makes me just like I can't stop watching her. Mary is phenomenal. Mary's phenomenal. I love Heather Gay. I oh. just love her. She's like me, pack the burgers. You know, she wants to, she's just, she's funny. She's Meredith. They're just, they're great. Beverly Hills, I watch, I go in and out. I, I got a big kick out of that Sutton. Oh, Sutton's a lot of fun. I think she came on strong. I loved her. I absolutely loved her. You know, I watch everything. Dallas. I think this new character they're going to have. Um, Tiffany Moon. But, Tiffany Moon. Tiffany Moon looks amazing. I was about to call her Miss Moon. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Moon looks amazing. I just think that every franchise has something special. I agree. That's why we love it. And that's why we love watching you guys on our TV screens. You always bring it. Thank Marge. you. What can we look forward to on the horizon? What's next for your businesses? What's next for your podcast? Do you have any big plans for 2021? Uh, 2021, while well, my book what will be out in 2021, and the podcast, I think, will be growing from there. Uh, I think it's going to be very inspiring. We're going to just be, you know, growing, growing the business. I think business has definitely changed. We'll be launching some new products that we're working on. But I think coming out of a pandemic like we have, and God willing, the vaccine is going to prove to be working on people, and that we can come out and get back to business as usual. And I think that's what it's going to be. And I that's what that's what I'm going to be working on and just pivoting and growing my business and seeing, listen, just like home products are, are selling. Fitness is selling. Apparel is in the shitter, right? Mm. That's really true. People aren't going out. That's not what's happening. So it's it's finding things that people need, finding the niche. And, and that's what I'm always doing and working. And I, and I hope to work with young entrepreneurs, inspire them and help them with their branding. And it's all about the branding and, and working on Caviar Dreams tuna fish budget that way. I love it. I yes. Love it, I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Marge, for calling in and chatting with me from Joyzy. I'm here in LA in the sunny. We have the worst weather in LA. I don't know if you've heard. Never come visit. Yeah, right. I know. So horrible to be sunny all the time, Zach. <laughs> well, Zach, you are just adorable. And you know the way I feel about a platinum mm. sibling. Ha- platinum babes got to stick together. We have to stick together. Well, thanks so much for having me on and have the happiest holiday. Thank you. You too. Thank you guys for listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me. Again, you can give me a follow at Just Plain Zach. Marge, where can people follow you on the social meds? 
uh, on the real Margaret Josephs. You can follow me there at Caviar Dreams Tuna Fish Budget or margaretjosephs.com and listen to my podcast at Caviar Dreams Tuna Fish Budget wherever you get podcast picks. Yes, I'll put the links. If you're listening to this show, that Thanks. means you can go and listen to Marge's show right now. So better, everybody better go subscribe right now. Go subscribe. And leave us five star reviews. We're podcasters and we we love, I love that validation. Give me five stars all day. Yes, five stars for the Z. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys Thanks. for listening to hashtag new filter. I will talk to you in the new year. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks, love.